right, welcome back. In this module, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about the next steps. We've created links to images that are external to the HTML document in a previous video, but now we're going to talk about creating links to other web pages and even other web sites. So the things that you are going to need to do this is I'm going to keep continue working with what I have here, but also too, you are going to want to have in mind, you know, a website you'd like to link to. Doesn't matter which one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make another web uh, page here. So I'm going to say file in new. And let's say Siamese cat for the title. I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll do some breeds of cat pages. So I'm going to go ahead and say create. And let's go ahead here. I'm not too worried about the overall design for right now, but I'm going to say uh, Siamese cat. And let's go ahead here. I'm going to Go back out to, oh, where is it? Yeah, there we go, my Lorem Ibsen generator. And we're going to go ahead and do Control-V. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a save. And I'm going to call this SCAT underscore info for short. So Siamese cat. All right. So... I've made the page here. Let's go back to my index document. And whenever you're starting to work between multiple HTML documents, and even when we get into CSS, they start to make tabs across the top here for you, similar to Photoshop and Illustrator. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to go below this image here. And I'm going to say, let's learn about the Siamese cat breed. Okay. So got a couple of options per usual that we can work with here. I'm going to bring back my file panel, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and highlight this text. And let's zoom in here as far as our page property here. So highlighting this text here, notice down in the properties, there is a link drop down menu that offers you the capability you can go in and type. You've got a little crosshair to point to the file specifically, or if you prefer, oh, I don't know why that's, sorry about that. Let me go ahead and see if I can. Kind of minimize that real quick and then we'll come back in. There we go. So you have that link for the text and we can either type in our link, we can point to a specific file we'd like to link to, or just browse for the file. So I'd like to use this here to go and link to our, our new page that we made. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out here and let's click on that little folder. Again, if you have that site definition set up, we can just click on the index or on the HTML document we want to link to and say OK. And now you can see that the text has turned blue and underlined. Now, at this point, I often get the question, can I change the way the links look? Yes, we can. A little bit of background on that, though. There are some folks from an accessibility standpoint that feel that's a bad choice. We have been trained for years, since pretty much the internet first began, that we recognize links as blue text that is underlined. So from a usability and accessibility standpoint, a lot of folks see text like this and immediately we think, okay, I can click on this. When you go in and start changing the colors on it or changing the way that the link looks, 
a user of your website can get confused and may not realize that that's actually a link that they can work with. So just a little background on links there. So let's go ahead and save and let's test out our document here. So I'm going to open in Google Chrome. There's our fantastic website. And now you see whenever I hover over, you see how my link works. Here is my new page. So that's one way to create a link. But let's jump back in. Let me show you one more way if you want to create a link this way. So we go to the Siamese page. And let's actually make one more note here at the bottom. I'm going to use my insert again. Let's go ahead and insert header two. Click on the Siamese kitty to go back to the home page. Again, really simple stuff here, folks. And what we're going to do is now I have that space. Let's go ahead and go to images. And let's get our other kitty cat. Alrighty, so we've got our other cat. For time's sake on this one, previous videos you saw me, uh, you could go into Photoshop, but we're just going to go ahead here and kind of shrink that down there directly in the browser here. Let me go ahead and zoom in one more time here. And what you're going to see down at the bottom here, so you have that source for the cat image. But notice you also have the option for a link as well. So I want to show you the other way. Some folks, they're completely comfortable using the folder. However, some folks like the crosshair because it's more visual so that they're actually pointing to the file. So keeping the cat graphic highlighted, I'm going to use the point to file option. I, to use point to file, you click, hold, and start to drag. And I know it's not the prettiest here in the video here, but you should see an arrow following you. And I'm going to point it to the index document or my home page. And there you can see it now popped up there. Either way, either the pointing or the fi file folder, they both work. So now if I go ahead and save, Let's go back to the index and we'll preview from this page here. So I go in, I can click, and then you see whenever I hover over the picture of the cat, you see how it changes to the pointer. I click and it brings me back to my home page. One last item just to show you is let's say I want to change or have something here as far as this specific text goes that goes on about cats. Uh, so maybe I know it's not the best choice, but I want to have it point to the Wikipedia article on the Siamese cat. So when you're ready to do that, you're going to need the URL or Uniform Resource Locator from your web browser. So I'm going to go ahead and just come into the web browser and copy that. So now I can come back into my text here and highlight my text. And a couple of options here that you can do. You could come down and you could just make it a link again and just say, you know, magnifiers in the way. This time, however, because you had to copy that link, you could just do a paste, enter, and now you can see that specific little piece of text here is pointing to the wikipedia.org there. The only bit of advice that I would give you is there's one more item which is called the target that you can set whenever you're making HTML web pages. Target chooses how the link will be opened. The only advice I'll give you just to keep this short and tight is whenever you're going to an external website from your own website, 
I would go under the target drop down here and choose blank, underscore blank. What that's going to do is that is going to force that link to open in a brand new tab. So to demonstrate this, on our index page, we have now gone through, let me bring up Chrome. We have our main little website here. We're going to go learn about the Siamese cat breed. I can click on the cat to come back home. But then if I click on the link for Siamese kitty, do you notice up at the top here, you see now how I have two web browser tabs. That's what the underscore blank is controlling for me. It is considered a good practice in web design that if you are going outside of your own personal website, any external links that you use, you open them in a new blank tab for the user so that they don't get lost or confused. So I like to show that to students whenever they're just getting started with web page layout. But as you can see, Dreamweaver takes a lot of the heavy lifting out of making links and connections. Again, if you continue to follow the channel here, we will get into the CSS side of this. We can make this much more, you know, designer-esque as far as layout is concerned. But right now we are still familiarizing ourselves with the overall interface of Adobe Dreamweaver.